Hey everyone, Will here. So for today's video, we are going to be analyzing the sixth presidential election in American history. That means we're going to be going over all aspects of this race, including the context of the race, the candidates in the race, and the results of the race. So without further ado, let's begin. So the sixth presidential election in American history took place from November 4th, 1808 to December 7th, 1808, spanning over the course of 33 consecutive days. Similar to the previous presidential elections in American history, the telegraph was still not invented yet, which made it difficult to transmit information across the country effectively. So the sixth presidential election in American history saw a variety of new candidates compete for the presidency, after incumbent President Thomas Jefferson chose to step down from office. It is important to note that Jefferson's decision to step down from office strongly reinforced the two-term limit precedent that was set by President George Washington. This term limit precedent would last until 1940, when incumbent President Franklin Delano Roosevelt won a third term in office. Thomas Jefferson's absence in this election caused a major policy rift within the Democratic-Republican Party. With some Democratic-Republicans supporting a limited federal governing philosophy that characterized Jefferson's first term in office, while some Democratic Republicans began to support a stronger and more centralized style of federal governing that characterized Jefferson's leadership in his second term as president. U.S. Secretary of State James Madison represented the faction of the Democratic Republican Party that supported a more centralized style of federal governance. James Madison was known for being a key player in negotiating both the Louisiana Purchase and the Compact of 1802, two major policy accomplishments made by the Jefferson administration. Meanwhile, former U.S. Ambassador to Great Britain, James Monroe, represented the faction of the Democratic Republican Party that supported a limited federal governing philosophy. So although President Thomas Jefferson was generally popular in his second term in office, one of his major policy enactments led to a heated primary election in the Democratic-Republican Party. This policy controversy came from the Embargo Act of 1807, a trade embargo that shut down all trade with Europe in an effort to stop British impressment or the forced seizure and enlistment of American sailors into the British Royal Navy. This act also attempted to address the targeting of neutral American ships by France. The French military targeted these neutral ships in an effort to disrupt American trade with Great Britain. Ultimately, the Embargo Act of 1807 backfired on the United States when it caused large-scale financial hardship for merchants in the Northeast. The Embargo Act of 1807 also impacted the economic bottom line of many farmers in the West, who are seeking to export products and goods like grain. This led James Monroe, a critic of the Embargo Act of 1807, a great deal of credibility with disenfranchised Democratic Republicans. Additionally, incumbent Vice President George Clinton received support from Northern Democratic Republicans, many of whom expressed concerns over escalated tensions between the United States and Great Britain. Democratic-Republican Party nominations for President of the United States and Vice President of the United States in 1808 were made by a Congressional Nominating Caucus. Meanwhile, Federalist Party nominations were made through a national convention that was held in New York. Even after the Democratic-Republican Party nominated James Madison as their party's nominee for president, some supporters of James Monroe and George Clinton refused to accept the results of the 1808 Democratic-Republican Caucus. Although James Monroe did not actively run against James Madison in the 1808 general election, he chose to not publicly withdraw himself from the race. Additionally, Democratic Republicans chose to keep George Clinton as their party's nominee for vice president even after several other candidates announced their intentions to succeed Clinton as their party's nominee for vice president. These other competing candidates included former Senator John Langdon of New Hampshire, 
U.S. Secretary of War Henry Dearborn, and Senator John Quincy Adams of Massachusetts. On top of this, some Democratic Republicans from New York still supported George Clinton for president, highlighting the major divides that were present within the Democratic Republican Party. Meanwhile, the Federalist Party caucus met in September of 1808, once again nominating former U.S. Minister to France Charles Coatsworth Pinckney for president and former U.S. Minister to Great Britain Rufus King for vice president. The Federalist Party was confident that the country's opposition to the Embargo Act of 1807 would carry their party's candidates to victory. The final results of the election ended up proving that Thomas Jefferson was still very popular to a majority of the voting populace. Coming in first place were both James Madison and George Clinton of the Democratic Republican Party, with a total of 122 electoral votes. Coming in second place were both Charles Coatsworth Pinckney and Rufus King of the Federalist Party, with a total of 47 electoral votes. Although the Federalist Party improved upon their performance in the U.S. presidential election of 1804, they still soundly lost to James Madison and George Clinton in the general election, foreshadowing the party's eventual demise into obscurity. It is important to note that some Democratic-Republican electors refused to cast their votes for James Madison, with George Clinton receiving six of these aforementioned electoral votes. This election marked the first of only two times in American history where a new president would be elected, but the incumbent vice president would remain in office. While James Madison and George Clinton saw a major victory in the Electoral College, they also saw a major victory in the popular vote, winning 64.7% of the popular vote. Meanwhile, Charles Coatsworth Pinckney and Rufus King won only 32.4% of the popular vote. James Monroe also won 2.5% of the popular vote, while 0.4% of the popular vote went towards other candidates. With only 4.36% of the population voting, a lot of the country was prohibited from voting, including almost all African Americans, women, and non-landowners. At the same time, only 10 of the 17 states selected electors by popular vote. Thank you for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more additional content. If you have any ideas for a future video topic, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see me cover next. I'm really hoping to grow this channel and provide you all with more content in the future, and your support means the world to me. Thanks everyone!